students i'm going to talk to you today about one of the problems that we were doing in class yesterday and didn't finish in class um this is for finding the k we're asked to find the k for the overall reaction between hclo and hco3 minus So we want to find the K for this overall reaction, and they've given us some information. They gave us for HClO, the Ka is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 8th. And for H2CO3, they gave us both Ka's, Ka1, 4 times 10 to the minus 7, and Ka2, 4.7 times 10 to the minus 11. So um, we want to find the K for this overall reaction. And just like all of the problems that we've done before where we had to find an equilibrium constant for an overall reaction, we're going to put together a series of reactions that we'll add together that will sum to create the total overall reaction. So that's not different than anything we've done before. The thing that's tricky here is that instead of giving us some reactions to work with, they've just given us these Ka values. And so it turns out... Um, this is a very powerful piece of information because the Ka actually corresponds to a very specific reaction. Uh, for example, these are three Ka's and they correspond to these three reactions. The first one, HClO reacting with water, forming H3O plus and ClO minus. The second one here, H2CO3 reacting with water, forming H3O plus and HCO3 minus. And finally, the second Ka, HCO3 minus plus H2O makes H3O plus and CO3 two minus. So the question is, with this information, which equations do we need in order to write our balanced chemical equation? And looking at them, uh, for the sum, if we look at our overall reaction, we have here HClO and ClO minus. So this first reaction, just as written, is going to be a good one to put in our mix. So we'll have HClO plus H2O makes H3O plus plus ClO minus, and our K is 3.5 times 10 to the minus 8. Now the second one is a little trickier. If we look at the Reaction, we've got HCO3 minus on the left, and we have H2CO3 on the right. So if we were to use this Ka2, we have HCO3 minus there, and that's good. But on the right, we have the wrong thing. We have CO3 2 minus instead of H2CO3. So in fact, we want to use this equation, the second one here, that, that corresponds to Ka1 for H2CO3, but we want to reverse it. So we're going to just write it backwards. And so we'll have H3O plus plus HCO3 minus makes H2CO3 plus H2O. And our K for this is actually, because it's the reverse, 1 over Ka1. So uh, we'll end up with our Ka because we reverse the equation, we'll end up with the inverse of the Ka. And if we add these guys together, our H3O pluses and our H2Os are going to cancel out. And we'll get the overall reaction that we're looking for. And so our K for the overall reaction is just the Ka of HClO divided by the Ka1 of H2CO3. And if we calculate that answer, we end up with 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 2 for our K for this overall reaction. Um, this example is just like all of the other examples that you've done with Ks. So it's not different from what you learned before. The reason I wanted to show you the example is because when we give you information like a Ka or a Kb, we're actually giving you a lot more than what's written there because we've told you there's a specific reaction that's associated with that. 
And so it's important for you to recognize when you see a Ka that it corresponds to a very specific chemical reaction with the acid reacting with water and forming H3O plus and the conjugate base. And likewise, if you see a Kb, it's the base reacting with water and forming OH minus and the conjugate acid. And um, so sometimes the information that you need to answer the question is implied or hidden in the information that we've given you. When we give you a Ka, it actually means we've given you this reaction, but you have to know that reaction in order to solve the problem. So pretty straightforward once you realize the trick, which is knowing what the Ka value means, that it corresponds to a specific reaction. Okay, thanks. I hope that's helpful. Take care.